G'day and welcome to the Geek Teacher. Today we're starting our introduction to Visual Basic programming, creating Windows apps using Visual Basic. Now we're going to follow the DDE cycle here, so that's Design, Develop, Evaluate. And in the design stage, uh, it's really important to get this right because if you don't, afterwards you might end up with a dog's breakfast for a program. But initially we look at the uh, design stage and here we need to define the problem. So define the problem. What is it that we need to do? What are our outcomes? What are we expecting it to do? We need to be able to test it later so that we know that it's doing what we need it to do. After that we'll do screen designs. So that's designing the uh, layout of the screen, where all the things will, uh, controls will go, making sure that it makes sense to the user. And then after that we'll design our algorithms. So this is where we think about what we need the program to actually do. And in these early programs, it's pretty basic, but eventually it will get quite complex. And uh, so we design our um, algorithms, our, what we're going to code before we actually code it. It saves a lot of time in the long run because we get to pretend to be the computer in initially and see whether or not it works. And then after that, we move on to develop, which is where we make the program in Visual Basic. And that's what you're probably most interested in. But uh, have patience, we will get there. And then, of course, evaluate. So we look at it and make sure that it actually works. So this first program we're going to start with is uh, the traditional Hello World program, where we actually uh, write a program to send a message to the world to say, I exist. Um, I've created a program. It's brilliant. Traditionally, it just says, Hello World. But because I'm Australian, we're going to make it say, G'day World, because that's what we say here in Auslan. Um, so our design... Uh, definition is we're going to create a program that when a user clicks on a button it will display the text g'day world uh, the program should also have an exit button which ends the program that's pretty important so that's basically what we need to do looking at that we can uh, then create our screen design now I use a program called pencil uh, you may have heard of it before it's an open source program for wireframing or designing user interfaces it's fairly uh, it's fairly awesome. It comes from uh, the open source stable, so there's lots of additions to it. You can do a lot with it. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling down here, there are a lot of different elements that are available. We're going to be using uh, a different one. I actually quite like Sketchy GUI, so I might use that one. Uh, we've also got Windows XP one, so if you want it to actually look really Windowsy as opposed to being platform independent, you can. Uh, you can do flowcharts in here. That's another way of designing algorithms. We're going to be using Nashi Schneiderman diagrams ourselves. There's mobile, so we've got uh, ice cream sandwich with the hollow theme, uh, all the way down to, of course, our iOS stencils. And they come with the standard install that you can get from Evolus. Um, but I like Sketchy, so that's where we're going to start. I'm going to drag a window frame on, and that gets me my nice little uh, screen design straight up. Uh, it looks like it's meant to be a design as opposed to a finished product, so that's pretty brilliant. Now, if we have a look at what our program is saying we need, we need some way to display the words G'day World. We need a button that when the user clicks on it, it will actually say that. And we also need an exit button. So we need one, two buttons and something to display G'day World. So let's head back to here. Um, I need my two buttons, so let's grab these buttons from over here, and it's simply a case of drag and drop. So there's my button, and there's my other button, and it's got nice alignment. This is going to be my exit button. That's traditionally bottom right-hand corner in most programs. Um, we do have, of course, a nice little X there in Windows, but it's nice to provide the user with a button to exit, um, particularly for your older users. Now, uh, to display the text, this is a button I'm going to use to click um, for, to make it display a message. I might actually put that there, uh, center it in my form. Um, and uh, now we need something to actually display G'day World. Now, we basically have these two choices here, a text field, which, as you can tell, has text in it, and a label. The difference between them is that a label displays text but doesn't allow the editor to type in it or to edit it. So the user can't type in it or edit it. A text field, on the other hand, allows a user to uh, type in it and edit it, change the text there. Now, we're just going to be displaying text, so the most logical choice, of course, will be label. We don't need the user to be able to interact with it. We just need it to be able to be displayed. So we'll dump that in the middle and uh, make sure, therefore, that uh, we have a way for the user to interact, to have the uh, message displayed. Now we're going to go through and add our text to everything. 
this is going to say uh, g'day world uh, with an exclamation mark why not and uh, we've got that now I am going to center that there's my label this button I will probably end up calling this button uh, click or something along those lines but I want it to tell the user to click it so there we go of course the exit button should say exit um, that's what we want it to do now we're labeling this form as well we need it's a good idea to tell the user what their program is all about so this one is going to be hello g'day world and there we have our screen design we have a label uh, probably LBL message or something along those lines we have a button for clicking on it and we have an exit button so now what I'm going to do is put that in my design sheet uh, which is this one here I've got a place for screen designs and so to do that I'll show you a nice little trick it, see that was fairly easy of drag and dropping um, I don't want the entire page what I want is just this tiny bit um, around the window so I'm going to go right click on the white and then come down to resize canvas and say fit content with padding because I want a little bit of white space the default is zero but I like five pixels I press OK and you can see I get a nice little bit of white around there to frame it. Now what I'm going to do is of course I am going to save my document. Control S will do that as well. Um, and I'm going to save it in G'day World Design. And this is going to be um, G'day World. Now it saves it in its own file uh, format so that I can open that again later and uh, edit it if I need to. Now that's great but it's still not where I want it so I'm going to come up here to document and export page as PNG so it would have exported the entire page so cropping it down to that will be uh, quite nice exporting page as PNG will give me my image so I'm going to call that g'day world dot PNG now we have to type in dot PNG because otherwise pencil won't put the uh, extension on that may be something that the programmers will develop later and maybe you might want to be involved in the development of that once you finish working with Visual Basic. I don't think it's coded in Visual Basic, but uh, a lot of what you learn is cross-pollinatable. So we press save and there it is. I'm going to go open that folder now. Um, I'm using two monitors, so you won't see it while I'm typing in to get to the folder. Uh, there we go. G'day World Design is opening. And so you can see my screen design there. I'm going to close Pencil now. And uh, what I'm going to do is drag my screen design into Google uh, Docs. I'm using a Google Doc because it's web-based. It's freely available to everyone. Um, and uh, it's what my classes are using. So on here, you can see that I have uh, one label. And this is going to be called LBL Message. And the purpose behind this is to display the message g'day world now it's a good idea to type down what you're using things for I've got two buttons um, the reason for that is it allows you to uh, look back at it later and remember what it is that you're designing and uh, these two buttons are going to be uh, BT, BTN click I'm going to call it and it's going to um, when clicked change the label to say g'day world and of course I'm going to have BTN exit I'm using BTN as a naming convention for button if you say it really fast it sounds like button you'll notice that LBL um, looks a little bit like label so LBL for label BTN for button and there's a whole heap of other ones I'll use FRM for form um, picture boxes will be PIC, lists, LST. Um, it just makes a little bit of sense. And uh, when you look at it, you'll know what it's meant to be doing. Uh, when clicked, the exit button will end the program. And it's that simple. So what we're going to do now is uh, take this and create our algorithms. Now I'm using a program called Structurizer. It's available at structurizer.fish.lu. It is also available as a download. You can get it uh, with the web start so that you always get the most current version. He does use Java for that. There is an Android app version of it now. I've uh, played with it. Didn't really work well on my Galaxy S. Might work better on other ones. There is also a Windows executable that you can use. I think it was written in Delphi. But I like using the web-based one because it's in the same place as my document. 
um, it's just an applet. Now what you can do with this of course is uh, create Nashi Schneiderman diagrams and they're simply a form of algorithm design. They're structured flow charts, pseudocode, the whole lot. NS diagrams are a little bit like Lego so I like it because it uses blocks and graphically it just uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, my second choice would, of course would be flowcharts. I quite like them as well. Now there are, just a quick introduction to what they are, um, there are single blocks like this one uh, which are just a single step and I'm assuming that you know something about algorithms already. Um, there is this one over here which is a two-way so if condition and that will give you true and false. So if the condition is true, then we'll do something. Excellent. And if it's false, uh, double click on that. It keeps popping over on my primary monitor, so I'll bring it back. If false, else, otherwise um, do something. And what I like about Structurizer is it keeps it nice and neat. It grows as it needs to. So you'll notice that I've got a single step and then a condition and it breaks into the two. Um, so that's a branching block, otherwise known as a Boolean. So you get two choices, true or false. It's if, then or else. So if, if, then, do this, else, do that. The, the next one next to it is a uh, multiple choice. So um, select some condition and the first one might be blueberries so for example um, what type of cake what type of cake do you like let's say chocolate um, vanilla strawberry cake could be milkshakes and then I'm just going to put an else in as well press OK and it gives us you'll notice this long triangle condition goes in here like with an if condition but it gives us a lot more choices I've got four choices there um, if they don't like it it's just going to skip it so I'm going to make that blank if it's chocolate I'm going to say something along the lines of I like chocolate too Straw vanilla, um, say you're a little plain. That's not very nice, is it? Strawberry, um, say sweet. Um, berries are cool. There you go. And so that's a multiple choice there. It lets us have multiple branching. So single step, just a little rectangle, and I can have lots of those. A choice, true, false choice is there. A multiple choice is here, so lots of choices. And I can then put another one underneath that. So say, for example, I like chocolate too. Uh, say, but have you tried coffee? There you go. And so it's giving me uh, more options there as well. And you'll notice that that means I get two steps here for every one step there. So I can keep building it up. And we'll get to know these more and more as they go on. I'm going to create a new one now. There are loops as well, um, but we'll get to that at another time. Because I want to get on with the current one. So looking at your day world, I have two buttons and a label. Now the label message will change, but that's not actually happening with the label. So perhaps it's time to talk about Visual Basic being an event-driven language. Um, the way Visual Basic works is that code runs when the user does something, or when an event occurs. So in this case, these buttons will run code when they're clicked. So if I click on Exit, it will run the code to end the program. It will not happen at any other time. It will only happen when the event of click happens when I click on the button exit. The same goes with uh, displaying the message. To get that message to display I need to click on the click me button on BTN click. So that code to display G'day world will only happen when I click on the click me button. 
If I click anywhere else, nothing's going to happen because I'm not going to write code for that. The uh, code to make the label change isn't attached to the label at all. It's attached to the button. The next thing I need to talk about uh, is to do with uh, objects and how things are inherited. So just down here, I'm just going to quickly uh, talk about objects here. Everything in VB is an object. And all objects have properties. So much the same way that uh, a person, that, you know, I'm a person, I'm a type person, but I'm a particular instance of a person. So I inherit a lot of properties that anybody else has. I have a height property, I have eye color, I have hair color, I have a gender, I have a name. Um, that's really important to know. And I can uh, refer to myself, uh, and you'll notice that police do that. There was a man, so it's gender, uh, 178 centimeters tall, that's height, brown eyes, eye color, brown hair, eye color of medium build. So, uh, you know, he's a little bit wide, but not too wide. Again, a property, build. Um, and we can refer to those to describe what it is and what it's doing. So we can do the same in Visual Basic. These buttons, BTN click and BTN exit, they are examples or instances of a button. That's what it's going to be named, BTN exit. It's going to be named BTN exit. So that will identify that one button there. Okay, so BTN exit is this button. Now that button has properties. Just like it has an event, click, it also has properties. To get it to say exit, we're actually going to be working with a text property. So when we change the text property of BTN exit, we will change what it says on the button. Okay, it's very important to understand. So if, for example, I wanted to change uh, BTN exit to instead of say exit, say close, I would change the exit, the text property of BTN exit to close, and then it would update here to say close. So working with properties gives us a lot of power. We can change where things sit. Uh, e every um, control has a top and a left, which gives it the uh, placement on the form, on the window where it sits. And that's really important to understand as well because that differentiates where things are. Okay, so paying attention to that, we can refer to that. If I wanted to change BTN exit to, uh, to say close, I would go BTN exit dot text, and this dot means that text belongs to that button. Then I'm going to assign it a value. So I'm going to say that that text property of BTN exit equals close, and that would allow that to change to close. So we're going to work with this dot value, the uh, value, the property of text. We're going to assign it a property, a value, sorry. So we're working with the property text belonging to exit button. And we're going to change that property's value to close. At the moment, though, what it says is exit. So that matches up with that. Uh, I hope that makes a little bit of sense because it's going to be really important working with the label. But uh, initially, let's go back to talking about events. We'll do BTN exit first. I double click on the uh, question marks and you notice that it goes yellow. And I type in BTN exit click. So I'm identifying here, I'm naming the algorithm that I'm designing. It's going to be the algorithm for the click event on BTN exit. By double clicking in this process block that I've already got, I can then enter in what it's going to do. So quite simply, it's going to end the program, yes? Uh, press OK, and there we go. I have now my algorithm design. That's all it needs to do. I click on Save, so it can save it, and I go to my wonderful folder that I have, and uh, hopefully it will save as BTN exit click, press Save. Excellent. Now again, I don't have it over here in my NS diagram, so I'm going to come back and go File, Export, Picture, or sorry, I can actually go Copy Bitmap Diagram to Clipboard under Edit, so Edit, Copy Bitmap Diagram to Clipboard. I'm going to click on that, I'm going to come back here, and I am going to paste it. And you'll notice that it allows me to insert it that easily. So a brief description of BTN Exit, it will end the program when clicked.
can go. So it reminds me what it is I'm doing. That's really important for really long algorithms. So now we need to do this BTN click event because when it's clicked, it's going to change the label to say G'day world. So this is where uh, remembering the uh, properties and values comes in handy. We're going to name this by double clicking on it. We're going to call it BTN click, uh, click because it's a click event that we're working with. Press OK. There we go. And I need to work in this one. So I double click in my box and I get this. So what I'm actually going to work with is the, uh, the, va the property that I need to change is the text property of the label. So I'm going to remember that uh, I have LBL message as my label name and I'm going to work with the text property. So I put a dot, the name of the, ob of the control that I'm working with, press dot to say I'm going to work with the property and then type in text because that's a property I'm going to be working with, equals, and then I'm going to put in g'day world. I press OK and I can see this. So if I look at my program and I go, OK, click on the button, what's it going to do? It's going to say that the text in the LBL message is actually g'day world. Brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. That's what I want it to do. So I'm going to press save. And again, I'm going to save this one to my folder of G'day World Design, BTN click, and I am going to edit, copy bitmap diagram, and then come down here and paste it. I'm going to give it a very quick description. So uh, we'll change the label to say G'day World when the button is clicked. And that is everything we need to do for NS diagrams. After this, we're going to be working in Visual Basic Express, and uh, I'll take you into that pretty much right now. Okay, so this is Visual Basic Express, and uh, we will start working in it. What you need to do is open up Visual Basic Express. If you haven't installed it, it's available from Microsoft for free. 2012 is out, but I'm pretty sure you can still get 2010. 2012 brings um, some more options and uh, to do with Windows 8 and so forth, but uh, everything I'm doing is 2010. Feel free to use either. What I type in here should still work in 2012 for the moment. Alright, so this is Visual Basic. Uh, when you open it, you will be presented with a new project um, window. If you haven't got that, just click on this button here. It'll be New Project, or if you've got this Start one here, click on New Project. As you can see, I've been using uh, writing a few programs here under Recent Projects, and that will show up as well. Um, we're going to be using a Windows Form application because we want it to look like see if I can bring it back up. We want it to look a bit like that. So uh, that's how we're going to lay it out and I will show you around Visual Basic. So it's going to be called G'day World. So let's uh, get back in here and type in G'day World and press OK. After a little bit it will load up and uh, over here in the left you'll notice a toolbox with a whole heap of tools if you want to work on it. I like using this layout because I get to see all my tools at all times so I've got it pinned. If yours doesn't look like that you feel free to pin it otherwise uh, don't and it will slot hide back over on the side. Over here will be the solution explorer so it will show me um, what I've got uh, in my project so here we go. I have a form and that Okay, so over here you can see I've got the toolbox. Uh, yours will probably look more like that, common controls, and that's all we need for this moment. Uh, but under all Windows forms, you'll find all the controls that are available. Um, there are a lot. You can work with all of them, um, which is quite powerful. Data sources as well for when you're working with databases, but we're not going to be doing that, so we'll ignore that. Over here, the uh, Solution Explorer. So if you have multiple forms, you'll be able to switch between them. Also, code view and design view. We're currently in view designer so this is our form looks familiar and then of course we have our properties box here. Now at the moment you'll notice it's working on form 1 and you'll see all these dots and that looks familiar. This form 1 belongs to the form in the forms in the windows in the system object so they're all different little objects and they all inherit little bits all the way down. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working with here. It's automatically selected text, which is fine. We're just going to come back over here and uh, resize this. By the way, if you don't have this layout, that's okay. Uh, I take this layout just by going to uh, Reset Window Layout, and it gets me back there if you've changed things around. Your window might look a little bit like that. 
Um, I really prefer having the toolbox available at all times, so I come up here and I click on this little pin and it makes it stay. My, my window is big enough for me to do that. So I don't need a really big uh, form, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to put my two buttons on just like I did last time. Put one in the middle and then one down in the bottom left hand for exit. You'll notice these little blue guides that pop up. See those there? They give it a nice equidistance from there. This is going to be about the middle. I'm also going to put a label in, so I'm just going to drag and drop. There we go. Matches up with that one, matches up with that one, but I want it somewhere in the middle. And I can actually align that by coming up to Format, Align, and I can do that Centers, uh, which I can then also do it this way. Align horizontally and vertically. I want to align it horizontally. If I align it vertically, they will both sit on top of each other. So now they're dead center. Now what I have to do is go through and name them because we need to be able to tell Visual Basic which one we're working with. Now remember, we created names for them and those names are down here, LBL message for the label, BTN click for the button and BTN exit for the other button. So let's go and match that up in this. Uh, we're going to go to the names first and we're going to say LBL message over here in the name section. If you can't see that and if you're sitting in uh, the category one, okay, it'll be all the way down there. I do mine alphabetically because it makes it easier for me to find. So I go to the name and LBL message. I then come to BTN click and you'll notice it's already selected the uh, name. So I can just start typing BTN click and it gives me BTN click as the name. Notice it hasn't changed anything else but I'm working with the buttons now. And this is BTN exit. So there we go. And of course the form, it's the main form. So I'm going to do FRM for form and then MAIN for main. So form main. Now it's named that and it should eventually name everything else. Now we're going to be working with the text so that we can change what they all say. This one of course was G'day world. Uh, and you'll notice that, that automatically changes up here. Button 1, notice text is selected again. This one we're going to say, uh, just like in our diagram, click me with an exclamation mark. If I press enter, you'll notice it changes over here. Button 2, we're going to do exit. Now watch this, I'm going to put an ampersand or an and sign just before the X, and you go, whoa, that's really weird. But if I press enter now, you'll notice that over here, I get a little underline underneath the X. That means that when it's running, I can press Alt X, and it will actually... Uh, exit my program. It'll run the code that's attached to that. Of course, my label, we don't want it to say G'day world yet, uh, so instead we'll say click the button below. There we go. Notice our lovely centering is gone. So what we're going to do is come back up here and we are going to go... Um, now I've lost it. Text align, right back underneath where I was. And you've got all these options to choose from. I'm going to go middle center, and then I'm going to center this again by going uh, format, horizontal, no, center in form horizontally, and now that's centered. So there we go. If I run that by pressing on this uh, green start debugging, you'll notice you can also press F5 on your keyboard. It will give me my program, and I've actually now made a real program. So it's popped up on my other monitor, so I'll drag it back over. So here's my program, clicking anywhere, not there. I click on click me, doesn't do anything because I haven't told it to. Exit doesn't even close it. But I click on this and it will take me back to my code. So now what we're going to do is add the code to do all that. And to do that, good design view is to actually go into each of the things you're going to run and tell us what you're going to do. So I'm going to add something called a comment. But if I double click on the exit button, it will get me to BTN exit click. Now this should look familiar. This is what's known as a procedure. Um, it's got a whole heap of other stuff underneath it that we can work with later, and uh, you can explore that, refer to your text. But this BTN exit is the name, and this is the event. So this is what's going to happen when I click on BTN exit, and we're going to end the program when we click on that button. Go back to the form by double-clicking over here on the form 1, and then I can double-click on click me, and that will get me BTN click underscore click. Notice how it's really important that we've actually named it so we know what we're working with. This one is going to be change the label text to say G'day world. Okay, seem fairly simple. Excellent. I'm going to come back to exit 
program, BTN Exit, just up here, click up there under End the Program, and I'm going to teach you how to end the program. Now this is the simplest code you will ever know. Type in END, press Enter, and it works. If we play that, I click on Exit, it ends the program. Now what we need to do when we double click on, when we single click on Click Me is have this change that. Remember that we were talking about properties. We did that in our Nashi Schneiderman diagram, so I'll take us back over there. In our Nashi Schneiderman diagram, we can see this here, LBL message.txt equals g'day world. We need that to be in here. So we're working with LBL, and notice that it pops up. I can just now press dot, and we'll fill it in, and bring up all the properties. Now these are all properties I can work with via code, but we don't want to work with all of them. We just want to work with text. Now I can double click on that if I want, or just start typing it, equals, now we need to put quotation marks in because we're going to be working with text, otherwise known as a string. Now that's anything that can be typed, um, which is really important to know uh, because it's different from a number. Different properties can handle different things. Text can obviously handle anything that's typed, so that's important to know, whereas uh, things like height will ha have an integer, which is a whole number. But in this case, we're working with text and we want it to say, g'day world. Notice, quotation marks, quotation mark single one in the middle doesn't break it. That's how I started my comment by the way. I put in a little um, apostrophe and then typed it in. Notice how it's green? That's only for us as the programmer. When we run it, the computer ignores that. It doesn't read it. It just pretends that it doesn't exist. It only reads this. So there we go. That's actually our program. That's all we need to do. Uh, you, you say, are you sure? Yes, I am. Let's press play and see what happens. Here we go. So uh, if I click on click me, what should happen is that should say G'day World. So I click on Click Me, there it is, G'day World. So that's pretty good, yeah, that's awesome. Um, click it again, just keep saying G'day World. Because when I clicked Click Me, it ran this code, which changed the text property of LBL message to have this value, which is G'day World. And uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. Click on Exit, and it's done. Now, in terms of Evaluate, did it work? Well, yes, it did. Uh, we got it to change the label. There are things that we could do better in, next, in the future. We could uh, learn to make sure that G'day World is always centered. Uh, other things we could do, the look of it's pretty boring. So I could change the fonts over here in the properties. All these properties are things that you can play with and change. Feel free to do that. Have a look around. Microsoft Sans Serif, I mean, that's pretty boring. So I want something else. Uh, so I might choose... Uh, if I ever get my window popping up, I might choose something like Comic Sans or or make it bold and make it larger. So uh, let's go choose Comic Sans because I know, oh, actually, what's that? I really like that one, Blackadder. Let's use Blackadder bold and make it 26. There we go. Click the button below. So I can change that and I can change the text color to all these wonderful things over here so I can make it red and so forth. So I can do that. And that's something I might do in my evaluation as well. But that's as simple as it is. We learnt, now have learnt how to change text values. And that property, then we can play with those properties forever. I can make it so that when I click on that, it changes this one to say, um, I'm an awesome programmer or something like that. We've also learnt to work with events. So we've worked with the click event and how to add code to it by simply double clicking on it. And we know that we can type comment uh, code in there. We've also learned about comments. So here we go, by putting an apostrophe in at the start, we can tell ourselves what it is that we're going to do. And that is important, because if you're working in a team, eventually you will want to be able to share that with everybody else. And that is as simple as it is. So we'll come up here to press Save. Really important to do that, because otherwise we'll lose it. And you'll notice that if you've named it properly, it will actually come up with the solution name, and it will put it in this Projects folder. That's where all your files are going to be. So make sure of that, because um, otherwise you'll lose it. Okay, click on Save and you're done. That's as simple as it is. You've been listening to The Geek Teacher. This is uh, the first step in the introduction. In future, we won't spend as much time talking about stuff. We'll just go do it. But uh, you've been listening to The Geek Teacher. The next time, stay tuned. We'll be uh, looking at more properties and more programming. Stressless. Be ninja.